Good morning and welcome to Newbell Parish Church. This morning the Gospel reading is another parable from the Gospel of Matthew. Often subtitled in modern Bibles, the parable of the wheat. But for those of us that were brought up on the old King James Version, we probably know it better as the parable of the wheat and the tares. The diocese has supplied us with another guest speaker and this week it's Bishop Libby. And she's got some very important things to say about the uh, implications of this parable for the diocese. To, uh, on top of that, we've added some further reflections on perhaps what the implications of the parable might be for our own parish here in Newbold. And so now it's over to Bishop Libby. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In his Gospel, Matthew calls the Kingdom of God the Kingdom of Heaven. He introduces Jesus at the start of his ministry, saying, The Kingdom of Heaven has come near. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' teaching and healing is the proclamation of the good news of the Kingdom. In his gospel, the first record of such teaching begins, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew's gospel, the heart of Jesus' ministry is the prayer, Your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, The disciples are the ones to whom have been given the kingdom of heaven. You get the idea. In Matthew's Gospel, the idea, the image, the truth of the kingdom really matters. The passage set for today is the first parable of the kingdom in Matthew's Gospel. Matthew has already told us that the kingdom is good news. So what is the bad news? The anxiety or fear or concern that this parable might be addressing? How is this first parable of the kingdom good news? So let's go first to the explanation that Jesus gives for the parable that he's told. The explanation is a reassurance that whatever the indications to the contrary may be, the weeds that grow from the bad seed will be dealt with. So let's imagine what the questions might be that this parable responds to. Why do bad people seem to prosper? Why doesn't good win? Why should we, how can we carry on faithfully when things are not going as we hoped? And Jesus' answer encourages us to take heart, for God has this in his time. And then, Jesus says, then, then the righteous shall shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. And if we can trust for then, what might that mean for now? Of course, parables are not codes to be deciphered to reveal a secret, but stories to help us think differently to see from a different perspective, to reconsider and be surprised. So I don't have the answer. All I have is my prayerful viewpoint. But this is what this first parable of the kingdom is revealing to me. First, I note that the good seed are the children of the kingdom. What good news that is. The promise of the kingdom matters to me. My desire for this diocese is that we so know that we are loved beyond measure by Jesus and secure in the hope that gives us. We have the confidence to love without restraint. And that, for me, is the kingdom of God. 
since lockdown i've set my fitbit with an alarm that goes off every six hours at seven in the morning and at lunchtime at one and at seven in the evening um, and, and when that alarm goes off i pause in whatever i'm doing and i say the lord's prayer i pray your kingdom come and i mean it i'm not just being pious or reciting words by right i mean it it's a heartfelt prayer it seems to me an extraordinary grace that we're invited to be children of the kingdom what a gift not something that i deserve or have earned just the gift of god to his beloved children an extraordinary grace to be invited to be children of the kingdom of God, which is for me salvation and community and justice and hope. I want to discover more of that kingdom and I want to share it. Because as this parable tells us, we are sown into the world. Last week, the new Archbishop of York at his installation, rather than knocking to be let into York Minster, knocked to be let out. Our place is not to be withdrawn, to step back from the world, but to be in it, with our roots entangled among it. We have seen the kingdom of heaven in these last months as circumstances which no one had foreseen or desired meant that we looked not inward towards ourselves and our own concerns, but outward to the world in prayer and worship, in making available learning and the exploration of faith in telling Jesus' story and our own stories in new ways, in practical, loving service for our communities. This parable assures us we can be honest. We can be honest about the bad as well as the good in the world. God knows it. We can be honest about the bad as well as the good in the church. God knows it. We can be honest about the bad as well as the good in ourselves. God knows it. There is no need for pretense. This parable also tells us it's not our job to sort out between the bad and the good. In others, that's God's job to deal with that. So what then is our job as good seed sown by Christ in the world? Well, my prayer is that we yearn to grow God's kingdom for all ages and across every community, every bit of geography and socioeconomic context of our county and our city. I long that who we are as kingdom people, courageous, compassionate, creative and committed, is so alive and attractive and inspirational that growth, the fundamental sign of life, is just natural. Growth in the depth of our faith and the daily living of our discipleship. Growth in the participation of our worshipping communities. Growth in our generosity of every kind, including the growth of impact for our communities. How can we be people of growth, bearing good fruit, which we pray will hold within it the seeds for further sowing? being sown yet further afield. What is our equivalent of good soil and fertiliser and water and sunlight to help us to grow? 
Well, Acts 2 summarises the things that contributed to fruitfulness in the earliest Christians and that first Christian community. They devoted themselves, we're told, to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. All who believed were together. And they had things in common. Selling their possessions and goods to distribute the proceeds to all has, as any had need. And day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home, ate their foods with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. Day by day, the Lord was adding to their number those who were being saved. Not much has changed. The things that nourish us remain the same. We are nourished as we pray and learn and tell and serve. And the fruits that we will bear remain much the same too. Seen as much in how we are as in what we do. As we read in the letter to the Galatians, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. So this week, let's think of ourselves as seed sown by Christ in the places we are, in our homes and schools and workplaces, as well as in our churches. In the context, all aspects of our lives happen among our family and friends and colleagues and neighbours, both casual contacts and their deepest relationships. And trusting in the hope that God, with love and justice, holds our future, all our futures, secure. Let's see if letting go of worrying about what to do with other people and their choices and decisions Worrying about bad seed sets us free to grow the fruits of good seed for the kingdom each day. Our reading ends. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. That means take notice. Don't just hear the noise of the words. Listen to the meaning. Ponder these things. Turn them over, look at them from different angles. Don't just take the word of the bishop. Think, discuss, discover, discern, test it out for yourselves. And feel free to let me know then what the kingdom of God means for you and the ways that God is at work growing the kingdom in you and around you. And be assured of my prayers as together we seek first the kingdom of God. Our creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>